Hey folks, welcome to Flukatronic. Today we're going to look at some very interesting flutes. This is the Easy Anasazi Flute uh, by Mr. Stephen DeRuby, who uh, has passed away a few years ago. So these are obviously no longer in production and getting uh, pretty hard to come by. So um, I was uh, pleased to have this opportunity. A uh, gentleman in California, I believe, was selling these flutes, was unable to play them, and uh, sold me this, this pair. Um, he did want to keep them together. I have a C, low C, and then a lower A. And I did tell him that um, I was probably not going to be real comfortable with the A, and I might have to uh, pass that on to someone else, but we're going to give it a little uh, go and uh, see how that goes. So today I want to, um, first of all, just uh, give you a look at the flutes. Um, nice piece of um, what I believe is Eastern Aromatic Cedar. A great finish on these, kind of a, um, not too glossy, but it's very smooth finish. Um, the uh, selling point of this is uh, the mouthpiece. So combination of the mouthpiece and the tuning. And the name Easy Anasazi comes from a style of flute that is rim blown. Um, and if you look at the mouthpiece here, you can see, hopefully, that this flute is still essentially rim blown. The uh, sound mechanism comes from this uh, little notch in the rim there, but you also have this mouthpiece, kind of a thin, uh, short height mouthpiece, and it's even shorter um, when it comes out there to direct that air stream against the notch, uh, against the rim. And this design came about, uh, I believe we started making these in 2009. Came about because the, uh, the real rim blown flutes have a reputation for being very hard to uh, to play and get used to. I've seen reports of some folks taking days, weeks, even longer, just to get a sound out of them. And part of that is just the the angle you have to hold that rim uh, against your uh, against your lip and trying to form an airstream against that that edge. Just takes some folks a lot of. Uh, practice and trial and error to get that right. Now, I've never seen one, so I can't uh, attest to that firsthand, but I can uh, believe it. Okay, so let's just go over um, the scale, the advertised scale, the real scale, and some extended scale notes. All right, so you've got six holes on the top, one on the back. So this is advertised as a major scale flute, and can be played that way. So uh, here's a C major scale. Okay, so that's C major. Obviously, it is missing the F note. The fourth uh, note in the full C major scale is not on the flute, but other than that, you have from uh, C4 all the way up to E5, all the notes are available. So this plays probably more like a big whistle, to be honest, um, in terms of uh, just in terms of, of the response and the scale. So you kind of go up um, and all fingers off gives you the, the B note and then then you have three notes in the upper uh, octave. So you don't get a full second octave like a, a whistle. The real rim blown flutes um, I believe get um, even more in terms of extended range and um, I think there's a third register. I, I've heard some some examples of that. So you, so you get a little bit um, less range with this. 
which is probably just a function of uh, the mouthpiece and the rim not being completely open. So you lose um, you lose some range, but you get ease of playing. Because um, obviously with the mouthpiece, you don't have to worry about holding at a certain angle. You know, so you get a lot more freedom that way. Okay, so that's the advertised scale. Now, the real scale is actually quite a bit different. Because if you just play up the scale, you get two notes that are not in the major scale. You get an E flat and a B flat. So I'll show you that. Alright, so obviously those two notes open a lot more possibilities for minor scales and alternate keys and, and so forth. So we'll be exploring that in, in later videos. And then uh, for some of the other missing notes, you do have um, some cross fingerings uh, and half holes for those. A half hole for the C sharp, you have a cross fingering for uh, F sharp, and then a cross fingering for a flat or G sharp. So that goes like this. Okay, so you get three extra notes from, from cross fingering. So those are a little bit breathier, a um, little less stable in terms of the tuning, but, but they are there. Uh, there really is not much of a way to get that F note, F note though. That's some um, um, to get that. You have to to try to get that. You do the F and try and um, shade that last remaining hole to get down to the F. But um, you can see, well, I'll show you. It doesn't doesn't quite work. Can you see it, it really wants to break into that upper octave and do other weird things? So. The F just kind of is not on this flute, so it's, it's not fully chromatic, but you get everything else there. So that's cool. Now, let's look at the A. The A is um, quite similar. Again, Eastern Red Cedar. Uh, some cool knots and stuff there. Again, very smooth, nice finish. Um, did offset the uh, bottom hole here, uh, the root note. And the reason for that is that it's a long reach to get down uh, to that root note, and that's um, kind of a problem for me, but I'll, I'll do my best here. You know, this big flute um, is really a reach for both hands, but particularly that bottom hand. And it plays a little more comf comfortably if you can do like a modified hyper's grip to um, kind of angle your fingers down there to take some of that wrist angle out. cool thing I found with the A, which is one reason I might try to keep it, um, with that second register you can get some kind of multiphonics going on. I'm not sure how well that's going to come uh, across over YouTube, but you almost get um, both octaves at the same time coming coming down that tube. So so that's pretty cool. Um, 
Now, if you want to play around with this uh, tuning and you're not able to find an easy Anasazi and you don't want to mess with the, uh, the Remblom uh, Embouché, <laughs> um, there are a few options of makers um, that offer this tuning with a more typical Native American style flute uh, mouthpiece. Uh, the ones I know about, there's a couple on Facebook. Um, guy by the name of Ernest Olivas. Uh, he makes a flute called the Enchanter Flute. So if you Google that, you can find it, and I'll give you a link below to his Facebook page. I believe he makes mostly uh, A sharp and G sharp, kind of around the, this, this low A flute. Um, um, my Facebook friend Brent Adams has also uh, taken a shot at one. I think he made a low G. Uh, and sold it off so you might could be talked into making another one and the other one is singing singing tree flutes Miguel M Medina makes a version of this in a high F sharp although um, his dimensions are a little bit bigger so it's still um, gonna be quite a reach for um, for that singing tree version um, but you can search for those um, folks have uh, playing samples and songs on on YouTube for all three of those really um, but that's an option for you if you wanted to get a new flute uh, with this tuning okay so that's it for today I'll be uh, coming up with some uh, cover songs soon with the, with the C flute particularly I've got one picked out um, it might be a surprise um, usually these flutes you'll see played uh, kind of the uh, low and slow technique you know a lot of meditation style um, or uh, just ambient music kinds of things with these with these flutes, but um, they are very versatile, especially that C flute. Um, we're going to do some jazz on it, so uh, <laughs> uh, but that'll be coming up soon. So thanks for watching. Bye.